Hey everybody, thanks for worshiping with us today on this Ash Wednesday. We're so excited that you're here. You know, I, I think it's one of the most um, widely seen and widely known, but perhaps the most mis- misunderstood uh, Christian practice. Many churches around the world on this very day are marking the beginning of the season that we call Lent, which is 40 days leading up to Easter. And what we take advantage of during this season is to reflect on how the crucifixion and resurrection that we remember and celebrate in about 40 days and why that was necessary. And we recognize that it was because of our sin and our brokenness that Jesus went to the cross and Jesus ultimately beat sin through the empty grave. And so as we reflect and remember it, we also hold hold it with hope because the season isn't about beating ourselves up and making ourselves feel terrible. The season is about how God's grace empowers us to live differently in spite of the fact um, that we have, have become broken and sinful people. There's a gift of grace that has given us a way out through Jesus Christ. And so the season isn't just about then repentance, meaning sorrowfulness, but we misunderstand repentance and think that it means that we're supposed to feel bad and seek forgiveness, but it's so much more than that. Repentance is, means to actually turn around and move the other direction, which can't be just an apology or just a magic prayer of forgiveness, but we should seek to do something differently. And to kind of talk about that, I thought I would look at the story of Jonah. Maybe you're familiar with the story of Jonah in the Bible. Um, you know, probably you got swallowed by a fish, but there's so much depth and goodness to the story that Maybe the VeggieTales version or whatever we think of in our heads doesn't really offer. And basically what happened in the story is that there's this guy named Jonah, who's an Old Testament prophet, and the book is written in narrative form, meaning it's a story. And God tells Jonah to go to the city of Nineveh and tell the people of Nineveh that God sees what they're doing and that God cares. Um, And if they don't do something about it, it's not going to be a pretty future for them. And Jonah refuses because he hates the people of Nineveh. He cannot stand them. And the last thing that he wants is to offer them a second chance. And so this is when Jonah ends up getting swallowed by the fish because he tries to run from God. And then then Jonah relents um, and gets spit up by the fish and makes his way to Nineveh to give to give them the message. But when Jonah gets there, he only gives them a five-word message. In Hebrew, it's only five words. In English, it's a little bit more. Uh, But in essence, he says, in 40 days, Nineveh will be overthrown. In 40 days, Nineveh will be overthrown. He gives this message. He's like, fine, God, I did what you asked. And he walks away. Now, Jonah still isn't hoping that they do something about it or change. Jonah wants their destruction to come. He wants the bad ending. And so Jonah thinks, well, if I just give him a terrible sermon, they're going to be like, well, that was weird. And so Jonah walks away and he sits up on a hill. Um... And he wants to watch Nineveh burn, literally post himself up outside the city, sits on a hill to watch Nineveh burn to the ground. But God had a different plan than this. Because the people of Nineveh actually changed. It says that they put on sackcloth and ashes, which was a practice of repentance. And part of that's where we get the tradition of ashes today from. But they put on sackcloth and ashes and it said that they fasted and the king called on everyone to to change of their wicked ways and stop doing evil. And so they actually change. And so here's how God responds. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not not bring on the, the destruction he had threatened. You see, when when Jonah gave the Ninevites the message from God that they were going to be overthrown, God meant it. God meant that they would be overthrown. It just wasn't in the way that Jonah was hoping. You see, Nineveh was overthrown, but they were overthrown. Instead of being overthrown by anger and destruction, they were overthrown by God's grace and God's mercy and God's love. This is how they were overthrown. They actually transformed. They didn't just say, oh no, we've been bad. We're really, really sorry. And then keep going, living their own way. They actually had a change. And this is why God says, when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, God's heart was bent to them. You see, it wasn't just religious ritual for these people. It wasn't just a, you know, a fast or or giving something up. It wasn't surface level sorrow. Scripture tells us that they actually made a change, that things were different from them. It doesn't say that God heard their apology and that was good enough for him. 
It said, once God saw what they had done and that they had changed from their evil ways, then God relented. And this is what it means to repent. Not to sulk, not to feel bad that we are broken and sinful people and our sin is so evil and so we're so bad. And so this is what the, it's not about that. It's about an opportunity to repent because God's grace is for us all. And so we want to look at another another passage where God talks about some of this religious ritual. It's all over scripture. And the person of Jesus also notes this. Remember how often Jesus butts heads with the religious uh, leaders who are who are all about these, these rituals and rules. And Jesus is trying to say, it's not really about that. You're missing the point of the, of the rituals. The rituals aren't bad. We can just often allow the ritual to become the point instead of the ritual leading us to the real point, which Isaiah 58 tells us a little bit about. Where God says, is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and to untie the cords of the yoke. To set the oppressed free and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here I am. This is what repentance is supposed to lead us to. This is what repentance should do, should move us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression. And not just resist them in this ideal, this sort of mental form only, but to actually resist and push against these practices. God says if your religious practice doesn't lead you to sheltering the needy, feeding the hungry, loosing the yoke of injustice, and so on, then what is it for? Jesus came and offered a radical lifestyle, a radically different lifestyle. And so God always has offered a radical amount of grace that's made a real impact on the world. And so in this season of fasting or giving something up, I want to ask you to consider that. Give something up. This is not a sermon that hates on religious practices. I'm a pastor, for goodness sake. But instead of thinking about what am I going to give up for self-improvement or to make myself feel bad, how can I give something up or add something during these 40 days that actually makes a difference in the world around me? That unties the yoke of injustice, that sets the oppressed free, that shares the food with the hungry, that provides the needy with shelter to clothe the naked. These are the practices that God cares for. And so rather than giving up soda or caffeine or whatever, that is all about maybe self-improvement or a second shot at a New Year's resolution. What if we actually did something that made a difference in the world around us? What if we focused our attention and our time and our efforts throughout these 40 days on feeding the hungry, on resisting evil and justice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. Because the world isn't changed through religious practice. The world is changed when our repentance creates justice. And that's what the season between now and Easter is all about. So let's make it so. Let's pray together. Lord God, thanks for the season of Lent as we begin with Ash Wednesday. Prepare our hearts for Easter. Call us to repentance and not just a repentance of sorrow, a repentance of guilt, a repentance of of seeking forgiveness to avoid any kind of consequence or punishment, but transform our hearts through repentance that we might actually move in the other direction of our sin. That through our fasting, through our religious ritual, through our repentance, we would make a difference in the world. That we would create justice by the way that we live. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
as we talk about the ways that we can change, the way that we, ways that we can actually make a difference in the world around us, an easy thing for us to think about is, is where does our money go? How do we handle our money? It's something that we use every day that affects all of us in some way, shape, or form. And so maybe for you during the season, the right thing is to examine where your money goes and how you use it and how you steward it. Because it can make a big difference, not just in our own lives as we try to repent and live a different life, but also it's a way that our repentance can create change in the world around us because our church does a variety of things and in many ways, and so much good is done with the world when we share. And if you'd like to give to the church, there's a variety of ways that, that you can give toward our, our ministries of worshiping God, learning together, serving others, and creating community. And we do this in a variety of ways, and there's many ways to give to make it all happen. All those ways are on the screen before you. Those ways are always readily available to you. And maybe this is just the thing that God's calling you deeper to during the season. We want to thank you for worshiping with us and joining us on this Ash Wednesday. If you stopped by to see us at Ashes to Go, thank you um, for praying with us. And we hope you have an enjoyable and um, impactful Lenten season.